Hello everyone, welcome to our next session of the R conference. For this one we've got William Hume from EBM Data Lab in the Nuffield Department of Primary Care Sciences at the University of Oxford. He's talking to us today about Open Safely, a walkthrough in R with a little bit of Python. Will's a statistician at the University of Oxford's Data Lab. He's focused on the open safety research platform since joining in April 2020. He's interested in proving how routinely collected health data can be used for prediction and inference and improving the transparency and reusability of research data and code. He's held various roles and teaching roles in academia, the NHS and nonprofits, and he is the Software Sustainability Institute 2020 Fellow. So I'll hand over to William now to take us through his walkthrough in R. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm Will, um, and I work at Data Lab, and I'm going to give you a quick tour of Open Safely. Um, if you want to follow along, there's a link in the uh, chat, which is just at the top there, and you can click it, and, and it's basically uh, a document of this talk, which goes into a bit more detail than I'll have time for now. Um, but it's all there for you to follow if you need to. Um, otherwise, just listen to me drone on. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, you all have a, some idea of what Open Safely is, um, especially if you went to Ben's to talk, uh, Ben Goldacre's talk at the start of the week. Um, but very briefly, it's a new platform for analysing patient data uh, in the NHS. And the core data source for the platform is the, is the patient's primary care record. Um, so that's what's recorded and accessed by GPs. But also there's linked data from lots of other sources like hospital admissions, um, death registry data, uh, COVID testing data and all that sort of stuff. And there's lots more um, to come uh, on top of the things that we already have. And one of the key features of Open Safely is that the, the data always stays um, in the secure environment where it lives. So you never have big um, extracts of pseudonymized um, patient records sitting on my laptop or your laptop, for example. Um, and obviously the privacy and security benefits to that, but there are other benefits because, for example, we can access data much more quickly if we submit an, an analyses to the server rather than waiting for the data to come to us to run. Um, and because of the interaction between the, the, the researcher and the server and the scripts that have to be passed, it all goes through GitHub, which means you have to share your scripts and code openly, um, which itself has lots of advantages and lots and lots of other things like that, which you can read about on the website, promotional pamphlets and so on. Um, so uh, obviously this framework, it, as a researcher, it might be superficially quite annoying because you're not, you can't use it in your familiar, comfortable, um, usual research environment that you're used to. Um, but as a platform, we're trying as hard as possible to, to, to reduce those annoyances. And actually, um, essentially, you do all your development on your own laptop on dummy data. So you don't really, those, those types of um, problems that you often see with TREs where you're having to go into a server to do your analysis, you don't have because you do everything on your own laptop. With, with, with simulated data. Um, so to support this sort of framework, there are a few small technical prerequisites that are needed. Um, and I'll skip over the details, but essentially you need to install Git um, and Python and use those two things. And you need to interact with GitHub. Um, although it's all within quite a narrow scope um, and the, the processes by which these things are installed and so on are getting easier by the day. Uh, and if you want to throw money in our direction, then they'll be um, easier, a lot quicker um, than, than we're doing it at the moment. Um, but we have a vision for how everything should look, and it's just a matter of time and resource to get to get us where we want to be. Uh, okay, so I'll start with a very quick example. Um, so let's say we want to use the Open Safely database to um, count the number of GP practice regist patient registrations that there are within each STP in England. So an, an STP is an administrative health region, um, and there are a couple of dozen across the UK, uh, across England. Um, so the first thing to do is to go, so the, the page that I've got open here is the Open Safely GitHub page. Um, and if we search 
template in the organization we have this research template here and this is what you use for every single new study that you want to do um, and it provides a template for the repository where you put all your analysis code and everything that you need in order to extract data from the server so we click use this template and it will give us uh, an option to put in the repo name test repo uh, and then we add a description, make it public or private, whatever, and then we rec we create this repo from the template. And I, but by the way, in this talk, I'm going to assume that the technical uh, setup you've already completed. So you already have Python installed, you already have Git installed, you already know a little bit about what you're doing with GitHub, um, and then we have instructions for all those things. Um, it's it's boring but necessary, and I'm not going to talk about it now, but. Um, Obviously, as I'm talking, we assume that those things have already been done. Okay, so this is the test repo, um, and we can basically have this repo and, and, and adapt it and, and submit changes to it. And we go into a terminal which uh, can see git, and we git clone the terminal https pub.com forward slash open safely. I know because I've put it in my personal. Uh, Okay, so it's WJC Hume, and then it was called test repo. And then it's cloning into the test repo. Here it is. And if I go onto my uh, local directory, there it is test repo, and we've got everything that we want. I'm just going to delete that because I've put it in another repo, which I prepared earlier, which has much more of the code developed that we want to see. So in this case, um, we want to look at STPs per uh registrations per stp and the first thing to do is to well i'll do it in r because you're all familiar with r studio hopefully um the first thing to do is create a study definition so this is a python script you can open it and edit it in r so that's good um and if you have r set up properly r studio sorry and if you have that set up properly you can also run the python scripts but we're not going to do it um just now so a study definition is a Python script, and that, that is a way to describe exactly what you want to, the information you want to get from the server. So first you want to say, the de define the patients that you're interested in, and then you want to say what the variables you want to extract are about those patients. So there's a few house housekeeping things at the top. Um, we import some functions from the cohort extractor library. This is like saying library uh, tidyverse and then running that to import some extra functions and the cohort extractor is an open safely specific library that's been written for for um, using using the platform and we, we again we assume that you've already had this installed and then we import some dictionaries or one dictionary the stp dictionary oops, um, which uh, contains a list of all the stps uh, basically and um, that we've got externally we have the index date which is basically uh, telling us when we're interested in looking at registration. So in this case, it's the 1st of January this year. And then the meat of the script is this study definition. So first, I'll show you the population bit. This is just saying we want the population for our study to be those patients registered as of the index date, which we've defined above. And then the STP is the variable. In this case, this the only variable that we want to extract. And that uses this function, the registered practice as of um, and it's as of the index date. And then in this case, we want to return the STP code. We could return something else here. We could return the practice code or we could return um, a geographical region or something else. Um, in this case, we want STP. And we have this expectations um, argument here, which says how we expect this variable to look when, we ge when we're generating dummy data. So um, we want it to be a category and we want the um, values of that category to be what we see in this dictionary that we've imported uh, and then the ratios of that of the of the SDPs that appear we've just set to be uniform which is something that's in the dictionary um, that's slightly more complicated than it needs to be but just um, it's all very well explained hopefully in the documentation um, uh, but it, these are just some necessary uh, concepts that you need in order to generate dummy data for you to develop analysis scripts but that's it in this case this is the this is the this is the study definition and it's very simple so we've written it then we go back to our terminal and we use the cohort extractor um, 
um, to generate a cohort. I hope you can see me typing at the bottom here. Uh, we choose the size of the population, expectations, population. These are options that I know by heart, but they're all documented. Let's choose 10,000 patients to generate. And we want to choose the specific study definition, which is study definition underscore one underscore STP pop. And the reason that's that, so that's the Python document, which you can see here, which is available in the repo. And we run that and it takes four seconds, three, two, one, maybe five, six, seven seconds, but it will run. And I've run it just before, yeah, there we go. And it's basically saying we've successfully created this cohort and the covariables, co uh, covariates at the location here. So if we go into our output file folder, you can see it there. I created one earlier, but you'll notice that date modified is 1047, which is now. So this is a freshly generated um, data set using uh, this expectations framework. And there we have patient ID, which is just the row number and uh, an STP column. And this lists all the STPs that you might see randomly generated for 10,000 patients. Great, now we have a data set. Now we can create some R code to analyze that data set, um, which will then later push to the server to run on real data. So this is the R code. We're importing the tidyverse. We're importing SF, which is a library for plotting um, maps. Um, and we're importing the data here. Output cohorts import, uh, that's the name of the data set. We're importing the shape file for the map. We're uh, converting the input data set into a data set of counts. Um, and then we're merging those, the, map, the shape file and the count data and plotting it and saving the plot. And that's it. That's all we want to do in this case. Oh, no, actually, then we're also doing a bar chart as well as the map. Uh, that's there as well to see when we save it. Um, so we run that code and it'll be, it'll appear in the plots uh folder and this is what it looks like so very compact study definition very compact r script to process the data from the study de definition and this is what we have um and this is obviously dummy data um and the practice registrations are distributed fairly evenly across the country by design um but obviously this may look different when we run it in real data so in order to run it in real data, there's two steps. One is to create what's called a project.yaml. Um, and this is very simple, um, but it just needs um, some guidance to so you know how it works. So this is a project YAML for this uh, repository. It includes examples. Um, it includes things for other examples as well. But in, in for this example, literally all we need are these two lines plus the um, opening housekeeping stuff at the top. So in this case, we're repeating um, what we need to do to extract the data, and we're repeating what we need to do to process that data. So it's two steps. The first one is run. So this will be what is very similar to what I typed before. Cohort extractor, we want to generate the cohort using this study definition, and we'll put it in this directory. And then the outputs here are highly sensitive because it's a patient level data set that we don't ever want to be able to access um, unless you have very high level permissions for the server and it goes into this repository. In this case, actually, it's not particularly disclosive or there's nothing problematic about the data set at all because there's no uh, con confidential information. It's just STP and the, number of, and the number of patients. But for the purpose of this example, highly sensitive data set that we put there. And then we run our analysis script on that data set. So here we're running R using the latest version, which is installed on the server. And this is the location of the script that we want. This script needs this earlier generated action um, because we need the data set to exist in order to run it. So that's why we have this option here. And then the outputs we have are a log file so we can debug and see what's going on if anything's gone wrong. And the two figures that we saw earlier, the map and the bar chart. Actually, I didn't show you the bar chart. But anyway, it's a bar chart. Um, these are moderately sensitive, which means they go on the server initially, but they are then checked by someone with not necessarily as much 
um, access as, um, as you would need to see this data set. And they're checked to make sure that they're not disclosive. And if they're not, then they can be pushed back um, to the public via GitHub from the server. So that's the YAML file for this very simple example. What this YAML file is used by is this website called jobs.opensafely.org. So this is the, go to the home page. This is the home page. This is live. I'm logged in, but I think you can see this even if you're not logged in. And these are all the actions that are run by various people running various different studies across the Open Safety platform. So this is me testing uh, earlier this morning to make sure nothing was going wrong, uh, actually last night. Um, but if we go back a few uh, days, then you can see, God, I was doing a lot of testing, wasn't I? Uh, ah, no, this is because this is from my workspace. Anyway, um, so it is just me. But in order to run this job, uh, we click Add Job, and we choose our workspace, which is this one, which I've already made. And then these are all the actions, and you'll see these. Um, I'm pointing, you can't see my finger where I'm pointing. I'll use my mouse. Um, these are all the actions that exist in the Project YAML. So we have Generate Cohort and Plot STP Pop. And if we go back, we have Generate Cohort, and plot STP pop. So we run this one and then we run this one and that'll create, that'll extract the real data, create the real um, outputs on the real data using that R script and output it for us. And that'll go on the server. It'll be checked by someone, possibly me, and then pushed back to the open safely um, repo that you've used and it'll be there to look at. So now I'm in the repo, I'm clicking the released output, which is where we've put it. And I'll go into the plots and if we click the map here, there it is. So this is the number of STPs in the real Open Safely um, database, uh, number of registrations per STP in the real database. And you can see it's not evenly distributed across the country. Um, some STPs are much more highly, highly uh, represented than others. Um, and there are re reasons for that, which I'm not going to go into now. So that's the first example, very straightforward. How much time have I got? Oh, it's quite a long first example um, eight minutes eight, eight well, minutes thank you i'll go through another one very quickly um and and maybe focus on the outputs so let's say now we want to plot the number of deaths over time um from the first of january and we classify those deaths um as being covid related or not um so let's look quickly look at study definition uh importing some functions from the cohort extractor library we're using more than we did last time because it's slightly more complicated we also want this code list now i'll very quickly talk about code lists uh, code lists are basically sets of um, clinical codes that define a certain event or diagnosis or uh, condition or whatever it might be in this case we want the code list that identify uh, covid related um, disease that are used on death certificates in for death, death registrations that we have access to in Open Safely. Um, all these code lists are stored on Open Safely code lists, uh, code, sorry, codelist.opensafely.org. Um, and there's lots and lots and lots of them. And if we search for the COVID identification one, which we have here, um, there it is on the top. And these are ICD-10 codes, which is essentially a disease classification um, ontology. Um, and the two clinical codes for COVID are U071 and U072. <clears throat> for anyone working on um, COVID-related stuff like me, you'll have these uh, code lists etched on the inside of your eyeballs. Um, anyway, here they are. And what we do is essentially put them in a... So in the code list folder and the repo, we have this code list.txt and we have the slug for the um, website where this code list is hosted. And we put it in this file, and then we go back to our um, terminal and we use the cohort extractor uh, command again to update code lists, enter. And this will basically pull up, um, a CSV file of those code lists into your repo, which you can then use in the study definition and in your analysis scripts and it should be done any moment. There we go, code list updated and you have to commit them to the repo. Uh, so I'll just show you very quickly. 
here they are again this was here already here but this is the time 10 56 um so that has just been created right now um and there it is two two codes in the code list coronavirus virus identified or not now we go back to study definition and we import these code lists very simply this is just um telling you where the code list csv is stored um and now we're interested in looking at deaths between 1st of January to the end of September. Uh, again, we set our expectations about what the data should look like. Now our population is a bit more complicated. We want people who are registered on the 1st of January. We want them not to have died already. And we want um, valid sex classification and we want adults as well. Uh, and then we want we want to extract age, which we do using this function. We want to extract sex, which we do using this function. We want to extract the date of death between any dates of any deaths that occurred between these two dates. And then we categorize death. So this is quite more complicated ish, but we're basically saying, did they die of COVID or not? And here we're using the codeless codes, the, the COVID codes that we showed earlier. Um, and if they died of COVID, then it's COVID death. If they did die, but they didn't die of COVID, then it's a non-COVID death, otherwise they didn't die. That's the study definition. We can look to our R script to run it. So we import tidyverse, we import the data set, we clean the data set up, we count the number of deaths per day, and then we plot that using ggplot and save it. Um, and then we have our project YAML. Again, we're extracting the data set using this action, we're plotting we're running the analysis script using this action and then we go to the jobs and there they are they appear in the job runner because these are accessed by the repo um, and we click generate deaths generate cohort deaths plot deaths and that will run in the server someone will have to check it make sure it's not disclosive and then push it back to the server here and then you can look at it and use it as you need to. So plots and plot deaths. And there it is. Oh, well, it's not quite uh, showing properly, but there, there it is. Basically, these are the COVID deaths on the top. Um, and that's the first pandemic wave um, peaking in April. And then these are non-COVID deaths on the bottom. And there's also a bit of a bump there as well, which suggests that maybe COVID identification on death certificates is not as sensitive as it should be because there's also a, possibly evidence of excess deaths here as well. Um, so that's it. I'm probably running out of time. You are um, running out of time, Will. We've yes. got one minute left. Thank you so much. That's mm. been a brilliant presentation. Do you want a final word? We, I don't think we've got time for questions. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, not a final word, but the link to the uh, the demonstration is at the top and go through that and you'll be able to go through that in your own time. And it also links to the documentation that we use um, for Open Safely and so on. So hey, basically everything's there. You can email me with any questions. If you're interested in participating using the platform, probably best to email Ben, Ben Goldacre. Um, but otherwise, just get in touch and we're happy to help and onboard people if uh, you've got a use for the platform. Thank you so much. We've been running a poll while you've been presenting, asking whether people want a hands-on workshop with Will, and it's come back with a resounding yes. So I'm sure Mohammed will be in touch in due course to um, see how we can arrange that. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of our listeners. Um, I will see you in the next session. Great. Thank you very much.